Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews. And what a guest I have today, one of my friends and the industry, we're also influencers. Thank you, IMTS, for that. Uh, So fellow influencer, Megan, please introduce yourself and kind of just tell everybody a little bit about who you are. Yeah, so thank you, first off, for having me, Charlie. It's really good to see you again, and I'm really excited because we're going to see each other at the Empowering Women in Industry event, and I'm super excited to present there as well as uh, getting nominated for an award that just blew me away. So uh, I'm just excited to meet everyone there. But I am known as uh, the Maven of Manufacturing. In Manufacturing, I started a podcast uh, called Mavens of Manufacturing three years ago. I'm also a tech writer in the industry. So I help companies find their brand voice and really help them develop their content strategy, whether it's with social media, white papers, tech articles. Um, now I'm doing a lot more uh, testimonials and case studies, which is really exciting. And then I'm a mom of three kids. I got a 19 year old daughter who is uh, starting her second year of college, which is crazy. And then I have a four and five year old who are actually starting 4k and kindergarten at the same time this year. So a lot of stuff going on, a lot of moving parts. <laughs> well, that will just, you will feel like a completely different woman and getting all the kids in school. Uh, oh, which yeah. is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, you got a lot going on. You have a passion for manufacturing, uh, but I'm curious about how you got into it. How did you find your way into this manufacturing? and love of manufacturing? Yeah, so it was completely by accident. Um, When I was in high school, because I did so well in English, my student counselor was always trying to guide me or encourage me to do something English focused. So it was either like a high school teacher or a college professor, which just really sounded boring to me. And I've always had a passion for learning about other people and other cultures and traveling. But my parents were really focused on us being successful as kids. So they were always encouraging us to go the four-year degree route for education. And my mom really wanted some of us to be doctors or lawyers or engineers. And I just was never good at math or science. So engineering was never like pitched to me. So by the time I did end up in college, um, I did a lot more drinking and other things than studying and actually focusing on schoolwork. I almost flunked out. And then by the time I was 19, I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter. And at the time, her dad wasn't really ready to be a dad. So he decided to go a separate way. And then I had to figure out, okay, how do I take care of this human being without killing them (laughs) and, you know, provide a stable uh, life for her. And Uh, I moved back to Wisconsin. I enrolled in the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee and a fellow classmate of mine told me about technical writing. And I just happened to have a really good professor that, you know, had a passion for it. And that was very contagious for all of us. And we kind of took on that passion and we really learned about, you know, the importance of clarity and consistency in terms of providing instructions for technical material, because if you're not very clear, Um, results can be catastrophic and you don't want that to happen in engineering or manufacturing. So then uh, right off, right after college, I found a position at a trade publication, which really got me super excited because that is where I could combine my creative writing skills with my technical writing skills. And I just learned so much about engineering and manufacturing. And I saw a lot of pride from the workers, from the different companies companies that I worked with. And even from like the shop floor all the way to C-suite, like that passion was seen at every single level. And and people in America, they're really proud of what they're making and building with their hands. So I was just addicted right off the bat. And I tried to get out of it, went into higher education, got completely bored out of my mind. So then I came back and did several things for different companies in their marketing department. Um, But then when I had my two boys, I wanted to stay home more and pick my own hours and pick my own projects. So I started Z Inc. Solutions as a writing service and um, got some clients there. And then when the pandemic hit, that's when Maven started. So uh, it's 
been completely by accident, but I'm glad it happened the way that it did just because I'm able to hear a variety of different stories and help spread the news of, uh, you know, what's good in engineering and manufacturing. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And we're so glad that you stumbled into this and, you know, <laughs> you, you, you feel the energy, uh, you shared a great story um, of yourself, of resiliency and, and, and how, you know, special it is to create, make products, to talk about and share the story of the people that do um, for really what makes up our life, what makes us comfortable, what makes us uh, able to live each and every day uh, with some of these products um, in manufacturing. Yeah. So it's definitely a job to look into. Uh, we've talked about it. There's several different routes. Uh, there is a college route to get to manufacturing and there's vice versa. There's so many different ways. Now mm -hmm. you're doing even more than just kind of talking to people who are already currently in the workforce. You're going out into schools. And that was something that was most impressive uh, when I met you in Chicago is that you had this following uh, from your community uh, and you're, you're going into that. So tell us how that happened and kind of where you see yourself in that. Yeah. So we have, you know, the labor gap or skills gap, whatever you want to call it. I know that some people are calling it a training gap, um, but there's, there's gaps, there's disconnects that exist within manufacturing and engineering. And instead of just talking about it, I kept asking myself, well, what can I do to be part of the solution and part of the change? So I started doing some more research in my own community because back in the late 90s, early 2000s, our community took a huge hit. And a lot of my classmates, you know, their plan A was to go work at the company that their parents and their grandparents worked for generations. And that just wasn't an option anymore. And a lot of people moved out of the community. Um, some kind of went down a, a tunnel of depression. Some aren't even around anymore, unfortunately, because uh, they got addicted to something and ended up passing away. So it was really detrimental to our community. And then we were finding ourselves on top 10 lists of like, oh, we're at the top dangerous list or drunk drunkest city list and um it was just something to to kind of bow our heads then in shame and um but the people in our community are really great and uh there was one woman who came back in and she invested a lot of her time and her money into the community and now we're starting to build it back up and uh we're seeing a lot of great changes but unfortunately there's still this disconnect that we're starting to work on now and i just kind of pulled inspiration from her like she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to go out of her way to say, yeah, I'm going to be part of this solution and, and try to upbuild the city again, but she did. And I'm seeing bits of glimmers like that throughout the United States where leaders are really stepping up and saying, no, I'm going to be proactive and put my boots to the ground and start solving this problem. So I wanted to be a part of that. And I went to the high school that I graduated from and I said, you know, what are you struggling with in terms of like your VOTEC programs? Is it funding? Is it teachers? Is it, you know, exposure and awareness? Is it educating the community? And it was all of the above. Like they, they just were really struggling. So um, I invited Andrew Crow in for this virtual event that I did. And I had some presenters come in from LinkedIn on StreamYard and each presenter gave their story and explained kind of what they were doing in the in the sector. And what it did was it opened up the kids' eyes to different opportunities all over the United States because it wasn't just in Wisconsin. It was um, people like Tim Wilburn and Amber Wilburn who are in Virginia, Andrew Crow who's from Missouri, Aaron Prather who was coming in from Tennessee. They were able to see different things that all of these individuals were doing and when I asked them about IMTS, I was like, okay, this is a really big trade show in Chicago that happens every two years. If I can get you there, would you like to go and see what's, what it's about? And they all said yes, and they were really excited. So um, I was able to reach out to my network and uh, Frances Burnell, uh, she has her own podcast called WAM in a I can't remember what the acronym is for, Francis, I'm sorry, but she volunteered to step up and sponsor the transportation for this trade show. And uh, the kids went, they had a blast. Uh, now we're trying to do it again with uh, more students to come. So uh, last year we brought 30. I think now they're trying to bring at least 40 or 50. And we're trying to think of ways of them to get there sooner so that they can either stay the night there or maybe stay a little bit longer and get transportation back home. So it's really just, you know, having a passion for it. And then um, the other thing that I'm doing is at the end of 
at the end of FabTech, which is the middle of September, I'm flying out to Virginia to meet with Dan Murphy, and he's part of a community college out there. And I'm going to go there and talk to the students there. And one of the fantastic things that happened with that is he came to me and told me that one of his students pinched a cable on their FANUC robot. And I shared that story on a, another podcast with Travis Miller and Travis pushed that out and a bunch of FANUC representatives went on the feed and they're like, well, what kind of cable it is, what is it? And they were able to get the cable to them faster. And, you know, it's just trying to inspire other people to have that same passion and put their boots to the ground. Yes, it's stressful. Yes, it's a little extra work, but I mean, we all need to come together and think of creative ways to be proactive because if we don't start bringing awareness about these opportunities for these kids of what careers are available, they're never going to know. And then they're never going to have the initiative to pursue them. So uh, I'm doing a lot of a lot of different things. I'm going to go to Canada. Uh, Hank Priam is there. He has two little girls. He calls them the junior board of directors. So if you're on LinkedIn, follow that hashtag. Um, I'm actually going to go out there and visit them and do an interview with them because they watch Mavens every week. Mm -hmm. And he actually teaches them some of the things that we talk about on the podcast. So one of the episodes was with Barbie the welder mm -hmm. and they asked him, hey, do, can we learn how to weld? So he brought them out to the garage and taught them how to weld real quick so um it's just fun to see that kind of reaction it really is uh it's really amazing to watch the impact that you're having and uh, i think that's rewarding both to yourself right when you can see it yeah. and you can <laughs> um you know interact with them but then it, it's just so much it inspires other leaders out there um, to see you leading and doing these things and say, okay, what can I do? Which I think is that ripple effect that we want. And you're definitely doing that. Um, I think it's across the board though. It's not just um, young girls that you're inspiring. It's everyone. And I think that that's really how you can see, yes, maybe this grew out of um, the time where we were stuck at home and and being creative there at home, right? These are the tools that we had, but now yeah. taking that to the road, right? Taking it out, meeting with the people that we connected with online. Um, and and that's, that's such a celebration when that happens. You just kind of go, oh my gosh, this is you in the flesh, you know? Uh, and yeah. it's, it's just really, really wonderful. Um, I'm excited about you coming to Empowering Women in Industries Conference and Awards Gala, Fashion Show, all of that. And uh, it's on October 5th for everyone. Um, tell us a little bit about your session and what you plan to talk about. Yeah, so it's called, I can't remember the exact title of it, but it's called Rising Together. And it's really just focusing on mentorship. So a lot of things that I'm seeing is, um, and I think as women, we have all gone through this at some point in our lives where we lack the confidence in our skill set. And, you know, there's a stage where little girls are really confident, but then they get to a certain age where they lose that confidence. And then they start to kind of isolate themselves or step back or don't take as many chances that the, as they should. And um, sometimes when you enter into a male dominated industry, we tend to be more competitive with each other because we feel like, oh, there's only one spot at the table and I have to get that spot so that my voice can be heard. And I just wanna bring women together in an empowering way. And the only way that we really can be successful in male dominated industries is if we start it supporting one and one another and empowering one another. And my inspiration for this talk actually came from one of the award ceremony in the movie industry. Mm -hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, her co-star got nominated for like best actress or best uh, co-actress or something like that. And they took a shot of Jamie Lee Curtis and she is just going nuts mm -hmm. for her co-star. Like she's just cheering her on and you could feel the energy and I'm starting to see more of that now within the sector among women and just, you know, being there for each other and cheering each other up and not like viewing each other as competition has really helped. And I'm proof of that because I'm part of a group um, that we all met on LinkedIn. It's uh, like six or seven of us. And we started texting each other on a personal group text because we were tired of uh, late losing our messaging stream on LinkedIn. So we just exchanged phone numbers and now we have a group text. And anytime we're struggling with something, we go to this text message group and we motivate each other. We we motivate each, motivate each other. We inspire one another. We help each other with resources. We connect 
each other with other people that might, you know, be able to help us with our own businesses. And we're all leaders in engineering and manufacturing. And one of the things that we ended up doing was that Automate, we all dressed up in uh, blow up dino suits. <laughs> and we walked around the trade show and everybody was like, well, why on earth would we, you do that? And we want to bring attention to what women are doing in this sector. So what fun way to do that. So I'm going to be talking about all of that in this presentation and just kind of share the importance of not just male mentorship, because yes, that's important, but to be successful in a male dominated industry, female mentorship is also vitally important for all of us to be successful. So what can we do to be better mentors to each other and other women? And how can we instill that confidence in little girls at younger ages so that when they do grow up, they'll have the confidence to pursue things that they didn't think might be a fit for them. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Can't wait. Can't wait. Such a great <laughs> message. Super excited. Um, I only have 20 energy- minutes. So I- I only have 20 minutes. So I'm trying to condense it down too, which is really, really hard. <laughs> oh yeah. That's the, that's the challenge. Um, but I, th- I feel, I feel better about that because like TEDx talks are like 18 minutes. So I'm giving people a oh. couple of extra minutes to like wrap it up. <laughs> uh, but it's because we just, we want to include as many people. So part of that empowering um, that we do is everything is an, is an act of empowerment, getting on the stage, the, the many speakers that we have, the, the people that are going to um, be part of the committee or to give out awards. You, you see that every bit of that is empowering. So I can't wait yeah. for you to be there. This is your first year with us. Um, and so I, really I can't excited. wait for your feedback. Um, okay. So if you, you know, have anything, I mean, I know we've been talking about a lot, but is there anything else that you want to make sure that our audience hears from you? Yeah, so I'm actually going to be at several events coming up, one of which is um, FabTech. That's in September. That will be in Chicago. Um, I'll also be at the Women in Manufacturing Summit, which is going to be in San Diego, California, which I believe is in September as well. Or yeah, it's like the it's like the a week yeah. and a half before ours, I think, something like that. Very close. Yeah. And the other thing that I'm really excited about is, so I just got my new passport. Um, it expired in September and it took a really long time to get my new passport. But um, I've noticed with my conversations that I've had on Mavens that the gender gap and the workforce shortage is not something that's just here in the United States. They're both actually uh, global issues. So I am intentionally going, or I'm going to be intentional on my travel plans for next year. Um, I already have a few places lined up, but I do want to start doing some more international um, traveling and speaking to women from all over the world and just kind of hear their perspective on what's going on within their own regions and how they're getting the next generation really excited about engineering and manufacturing because engineering manufacturing isn't just vital here in the United States. It's vital everywhere that you go. And it's really um, the backbone of any place's economical, you know, stability. So I really want to hear what other people have to say in different regions. And I want to learn how they're getting the next generation excited. Um, One of the areas that I've seen a lot of uptick in STEM education is actually Africa. Mm -hmm. And I've met a quite a few business owners that are women out there who are just rocking it out and doing some amazing things. So uh, stay tuned for that because I'll be around the world. Somebody said maidens of manufacturing with no boundaries. So I'm going to probably steal that. (laughs) I love that. I love it. And um, Africa has uh, got my heart. So um, let me know when you go there. Uh, We have so much that we can do just by adding one little thing, one little outreach, one little um, blog, one one little share your story, right? Uh, So I encourage everybody to do that. Um, Whether you're kind of in the manufacturing space, like I love saying manufacturing because we have pump manufacturers and then we have the people that use pumps to do their manufacturing. I always say it it takes a pump to make a pump. Uh, And so (laughs) it's it's across the board, you know, And, and those things are vital to life. So if you see somebody out in industry, thank them because you wouldn't have the things that um, you've hold so dear, uh, without them. So Megan, thank you for being here. Um, I can't let you you go though, without a little rapid fire. So what is your favorite, favorite book? My favorite book, um, fiction or nonfiction? Doesn't matter. So one of recently, I just recently, I just read brave. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, uh, 
what is her? Sheila, you know her. Sheila Vinny. Um, I actually met her at one of your events. I'm going to have to say that is my new favorite book because it came at a time that I most needed it. Mm -hmm. um, but another book that I uh, recommend to anyone to read is Crucial Conversations because it helps, it provides tips for you as an individual to step back out of your own personal experiences and kind of uh, move forward with conversations with empathy and compassion. So it's a really good book to, to read if you're having a lot of business conversations where things can kind of get intense and um, think people can start taking things personally. So those would be the two books that I recommend because they're just filled with such good advice and uh, Brave came at the right time that I needed it to pursue things. So Awesome. Awesome. I love to hear that. I always uh, want to I love watching how the universe connects and, and time yeah. and timing. And I can see all these <laughs> connections with people, which is really awesome. So thanks for sharing that. Um, favorite music. I almost favorite. wanted to ask you what, cause I, um, uh, I know you're always at the happy hour. So I wanted to ask you like your favorite drink, uh, but favorite music, favorite drink. It would be great. So I, anybody that knows me, I love my whiskey. So mm -hmm. I, uh, will drink that anytime I'm out. I, I love a variety of whiskeys and then my favorite music um I would have to say classical rock because I'm a huge Janis Joplin fan mm -hmm. and she just the soul that she put into her music was amazing and you I personally have not seen a lot of that so anybody that can mimic that kind of vibe I really love um Black Keys is another favorite band of mine I just love their energy when they play in a uh, modest mouse. They're more indie rock though, but I love, uh, I'd, I'd love to see somebody come and, and bring us those tones back, yeah. you know? Um, oh, absolutely. It was, it was funny. There was a radio station just the other day and it was like, um, you know, have you heard any really good music today? And they're like, no, that's why we're here. <laughs> and it's like playing some old tunes or something. Uh, it was kind of neat. Uh, okay. Best advice that you've ever received. Um, just jump. So I am afraid of heights and I went skydiving and the guy that was my tandem guy or whatever, he's like, you just got to jump and not think about it. And I think you can apply that to anything in life. So I, I feel like if you're scared of doing something, just jump and try to do it. And if you fall flat on your face, that's okay. Just get up and uh, keep going. Cause those are the best lessons that you can learn. Okay. Last one. It's similar, but a little different. If somebody is coming into the industry, what would you tell them? It's a lot of fun. It's a little bit chaotic, but you can actually be your authentic self here and there's a place for you. So whether you're good at math and science, or if you're better at English, there is a place for you here and we we need you. So come join the fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Megan, I could talk to you all day. Uh, thank you for sharing some of your time with me and I can't wait to see you in October mm -hmm. and what's next on your list. Just keep us, keep us in the know so we can join you. Uh, to That's everybody cool. else, please share this episode. Megan is so inspiring. And anytime that we can, you know, like and share, it's, it's getting this into the hands of more people. So please do that. Subscribe so you find Empowering Industry Podcast every Monday. And until next time, be empowering. Bye. See you later. Megan. <laughs> Thanks.